goes ahead and then it goes back, it involves the whole face. There is a connection. I always make sure that that feels right. I have these two examples here to show you two different examples. One, one is uh, a Jasper that is maybe too simplistic. It, it's drawn a little bit uh, oversimplifying. And the other one that is a little bit too complex, even if the drawing is fantastic, is one of Valentin's drawings. But it could benefit maybe from some simplification. Okay, so this is probably what you're gonna the extreme cases that you can can find when you're cleaning up. Wow, wow, wow. These awesome. toys are the best. And these drawings, as you can see, uh, I mean they're almost there, but they are a little bit um, oversimplified, maybe, right? Look at the hair here, for example, or um, this shape, how the hat is not following the profile of the whole head. One thing that is important is to have long lines connecting points that are far away. Sometimes it starts from the foot and it goes up to, to his neck, like what I do when I when I animate is I treat the body as one single shape like this see this whole line of action it starts from here from the ground and goes up to his neck that line has to be there, even if it gets broken sometimes, then there, there have to be something that calls that line, that reminds us that there is an energy that is connecting all this from bottom to top, right? And maybe it could cross with another line if he's doing something with the arms, so that we can keep the image simple and, and readable. We shouldn't have too many shapes and the, the shapes that are underneath the character should be really two or three, you know, two main lines or three main lines to uh, harmonize the whole, the whole thing. So this is, I think, what is slightly missing in this drawing. There is, uh, there is everything there in, almost in place, but it kind of feels um, there is something that is missing, right? So, what I would do here is try and rebuild the drawing from scratch and, and see how much we can improve it. So, the bow is here, of course, somewhere. And the eye, as you can see, is placed on the right place, so why does it look far from a little bit far from far off from the model? Well, one thing is that probably the construction on this drawing has no uh, not enough three dimensionality. So maybe we can put a bit of axis here. And one thing that, of course, this depends on the animation you receive as a artist, but. Uh, we have to be careful when drawing profile that uh, we should actually avoid perfect profile and unless we are doing a dual scene where the characters are really have to be profiled, we should avoid that. So I would probably put an axis here so that we can see something maybe behind at some point. So this shape of the nose is is missing his attachment to the to the head i don't see where it attaches now i can see it a little bit better don't be afraid of getting pointy here on the nose when you draw the nose the nose is again one two three lines you can you can get away with three lines you don't need to do more than that up uh, if you when you get on this bit here I can see that on the latest torso drawing he's doing this, which is because of the 
eyebrow volume here and that, that's correct so we are doing literally four lines one two three four and this part is usually nice if it's pointy so you don't have to do this okay um, you can actually think even if you don't draw it that sort of shape here as a half sphere and now I would need to find the mask here and then the eyeball will probably be a little bit bigger and more inside the skull like this And also we would be able to see maybe part of the other eye behind it here. This would give a little bit more three-dimensionality to the character and would make it look a little bit less flat. Now also you can see that the way he drew the mouth is a little bit too in the middle of the space between the nose and the, the end of the chin. So I would bring that up a little bit. Like this. Whenever the mouth is pointing outwards, we should see at least the this lip here. And he did it, but the the whole shape of the mouth was too much uh, far away from the nose. And then, now that we found where the eyeball is, the eye globe is, we can find that corner where the sideburn starts and where the hair starts and follow the shape of the face here. One, two, three. Then we draw the ear, one, two, three, which is a little bit too big in, in my opinion here. eyebrows let's check how it's coming out um, could be and then this line here of the head is a little bit too flat it's too straight maybe it needs a little bit of three-dimensional curve here and then we draw the hair one, two, three, four lines. This could be a little bit rounder. And then our Donald Duck beak. And now this line of the head should be more harmonic with the rest of the head. Maybe a little bit more down here. And then the rest of it, like this. Okay, so what, it didn't change that much if you think about it, but those small changes make quite a lot of difference. Was working with low opacity, I don't know why. See, um, if we go to this drawing here, this is a little bit better, I think, because it's a um, more attractive, uh, more attractive angle. It's a normal three quarter, but uh, again, it's missing a little bit of um, maybe. Harmony, I would say. I mean, there is everything is just there, but I miss a bit of connections. So, for example, I don't see um, the attachment between the chin and the neck. For example, here is a little bit too graphic. So I would want to feel how this gets there, and maybe the neck would be closer there. 
it really almost all the time Jasper has this sort of uh, feeling and this line goes from the neck here up to the skull and it goes down to the collar and then the the shoulder pads see this single line it's a single curve that um, how can I say put harmonizes all this silhouette here of course there can be bumps if I want to draw the hair here for example the hair attachment here I can go over that as if there is one layer on top of the other but it's still sitting on that main line okay now draw the axis here the eyes again they are placed again in the right place apparently but something is feeling a little bit wrong so I would first build the nose shape so that I know where the nose is. It's so such an important shape that I cannot miss it. And then I would draw the mask. The expression here is very, very clear, so he would probably have this expression. And I need to carve this concavity inside the skull. Even just with his eyes, the eyes that, that are there, it looks better, just because I define better what is around the eyes. See, we can see the concavity a little bit better. And then we can put the eyes slightly more inside it. So it looks like that they are actually sitting inside this shape even if it's not visible it's there and we should uh, feel it it's defined very well on the on the eyebrows here but under you, we cannot see anything we can see the eye bag line which makes it clearer but we should always be aware of that i think that is the most important thing on jesper's face finding the, that mask so this is something that uh, even for you cleanup artists is important because it, you might not exactly where to place the eyeballs and it's even if you don't draw the mask even if it's not staying there draw it and then find the eyeballs and then take off the mask so you, you place the eyeballs in the right spot now again the mouth here is too much in the middle would be here more up it looks like uh, has makeup and and so I would now draw the sideburn with three lines one two three the ear and the hair one thing about the hair is that according to the expression for example what I do is if he, if he has uh, wide open eyes and his eyebrows are going up like this I make sure that this line I'm talking about this line here follows this um, is harmonic with the, um, with the eyebrow so I put one line here for the tension and then I draw the hair this will give us the feeling that he's really pulling his eyebrow back so he's to, to make the eyes wide open and so all the skin is compressing there okay under the the, the brim of course or if, if he has it if this part is still visible even un under the brim so it will keep the expression visible even if 
most of the eyebrow is covered by the brim. See, I, I can't see the whole brim, but I can feel that it's pulled there. One thing about the eyes that is uh, that makes the eyes dimensional and interesting is that the pupils should lead the shape of the eye. So, if for example, uh, this is the right example. See, uh, the the character is looking to the left and he's very scared. For example, I wouldn't do this simply like that. Yeah, this works, but. I think that this is stronger. So the pupil is slightly pulling. You can even force it more. This is really cartoony, but sometimes Jasper gets that cartoony. We wouldn't do this on Klaus, but on Jasper we can do this. So the pupil is literally pulling the, the eyeball out of the of the skull here. See, so that, that works a lot. And also one thing that works is for me, if we have, uh, if the character is in front of you, we can see the pupil very, as a, as a wide circle, right? But when he's looking at this to the side, the pupil also becomes like a coin, like it, we cannot see the entire extension. It's really, it really works. Even if we do this, it really looks like a pointy pupil. Even if we, if we drew just a, like this segment here, because it looks like it's uh, really pulling that way. We can do also this, but don't be afraid of drawing the pupil as, as, as a line, this way. You don't have to do this the whole time, because this will change the eye direction. It will look like he's looking, if I'm, okay, it's, it's looking more this way than that way. See, this is looking towards more us. So don't be afraid of doing that. Um, mouth. When I draw the head and the mouth is important in the acting, he's, maybe he's doing his screaming, um, I give the mouth a lot of priority. So I don't do this anymore. Because if I do the shape of the face, now I am bound to this volume here and I have to draw them out inside this. It works, but we can force it more. So I would draw the ball and then I would pull the face as much as I want in order to give all the mouth I want. So it's the mouth that is determining how this drawing is going to come out. Don't be afraid of pushing it that way. Of course, if it's pulling down, the width is going to decrease here to keep the volume consistent, right? We cannot pull the same width down. So I'm kind of specialized in panicked Jasper. I don't know why I got all the panicked mouths, but this is something I kind of know. And it makes us uh, point out some something important, which is another element which makes Jasper look like Jasper and is this line here, the line that starts from the nostril and goes down to the mouth. Sometimes we just see the starting line here and the end line here. Since he's pulling his mouth a lot, he has a lot of skin here that is pulling down too. This line is connected to this point here. So if we do the nostril line and then the mouth this way if these lines are disconnected it's not gonna work they are on the same have to be on the same line basically and so we find the other 
end here, it kind of goes theoretically to the other end, to the other point here, to the other nostril, even if we don't see it, even if it's hidden there. So, I hope it was a poem. <laughs> um, um, so, whenever he pulls his mouth that much, if you look at some of the Thor's drawings uh, on um, that scene, I think it's in Bell, the Bell sequence, uh, on uh, Simone and Cirillo's scene, when Jasper is breathing very heavy, he has his mouth open like this, and the sideburn instead of being the typical composed sideburn like this it gets wild because it's made of hair of course so we can <coughs> we can do that when whenever the mouth is going so extreme okay we, we can do that there are some fantastic drawings by by Thor uh, about the, the shape of the mouth. As you can see, I don't draw the mouth um, in a very simple way. I mean, I use at least, uh, again, the least amount of lines, but you have to draw the, the mouth in a dimensional way, as if it is carved into the shape of the face here. So you have to feel this kind of carving into the shape of the face. See? Um, this line up under the nose here is usually usually follows the profile of the nose but then when we go down we can have a corner a sharp corner here and then it goes like this and then we find since we have this line here we find the other symmetric line on the other the other end of the mouth it's like seen from the top would be like I don't know if this is clear. I don't know if this drawing I'm doing is clear. I, I just rotate it slightly so that we can see that this line is going. There is one single line that is connecting all this together. Okay, you should always think that there is a connection between things and, and uh, make sure it, even if the line is broken, like this is the best example, this line goes here, even if it's not a continuous line. It would be actually ugly if it was continuous, but if we can suggest that there is a harmony between these, it makes the tension more consistent. And we know where it starts from. It starts from here because he has this sort of snarl expression, and that makes uh, the, all the complexity simple. And we see we would see the teeth here. Uh, one note for for the cleanup artists, the, uh, for the new ones. Um, I mean, this is also an animation note. But whenever there is a lip sync, it's very very important that, at least for me, um, the distance between the nose and these uh, the the upper teeth has to stay fixed. Okay. I mean, it can squash and stretch if the character is squashing and stretching a lot, but uh, it is important that you feel that this distance is fixed because those teeth don't move. They are sitting in the same part where the nose is sitting here. Like this is a one whole mass, okay? These teeth move with the, with the, the, the jaw, but these one don't. So make sure that whenever you draw, whenever you are cleaning up a lip sync, the, um, the upper arc of the teeth has to be consistent with the nose. The distance has to be always the same. If it is squashing, squashing and stretching, you have to be careful that that amount of squash and stretch has to reflect on the teeth and on the nose, but think this as one single thing. Okay, this, I mean, this distance. This is the upper arc, right, of the teeth, as we could see through the mouth. This distance has to be fixed. 
like it could be the distance between the nose and the upper part of the head okay this distance is fixed even if you squash it and stretch it it's fixed and the the, the teeth in the upper and the, the other part of the teeth this can move freely of course You win. What do you want? Money? My dad's got plenty of it. You must see Olympic words, man. Please, please, please. Ah! Whoa! This is the drawing that um, I wanted to talk to you about as well. This is a very expressive and good drawing, but in my opinion, it tends to get a little bit too complex. So there is. Um, um, a lot of folds, like for example here on the collar, uh, one, two, three, four, five. There is a lot of work here, a lot of lines that could be maybe simplified if you find to. Or, or for example, if you look at the buttons here on the on the shoulder pads, they have a lot of information that could be. It makes it crazy, but also it makes it slightly over complex. I think so. I will harmonize these shapes here, for example, this way. Um, so that this point is in a way connected to this point by one simple shape. Even if it goes inside the body and we don't see what's happening here, there is a connection. I always make sure that that feels right. So it will make your character look more harmonic if you think about that connection. Right? And then the these buttons here, they this one is pointing there, this one is pointing there, this one is pointing there, and this one is pointing. I think there is a little bit too much. So that could be simplified a, a little bit I wouldn't go more complex than this so it's uh, this is the case where we can simplify a little bit um, the color for example is the is where I would simplify the most this line is correct and then I would try to understand what's happening behind here. The collar is connected to the neck, right? So in a normal position, Jasper would be, would have this sort of look. So let's try and interpret this into this crazy version without forgetting this harmony here. So I would, probably simplify this shape here into just one maybe um, I would choose where to place one single wrinkle and that's it making sure that this part here is visible that is going behind the head somewhere So that the, all these lines respond to the same force, to the same influence. See? And then here, this is a little bit out of style. If you get something like this here, um, the wrinkles around, no, the, the skin around Jasper's mouth is never like this round it's never round so if his mouth is like this I would also give a little bit more this rather than just this and then I would do something like this make sure that this point is connected to the chin in, in a very harmonic way. 
it will be the S shape from the CSI principle, one single S here. And then we can place the nose. I would probably bring it a little bit more down because it's dragged by the mouth. And I would get pointy here. I would probably draw the, the whole mouth a little bit bigger, but that, this can work as well. Sideburns would be pulled. Now, this, for example, for me is a little bit strange because it's like everything is pulled, but the sideburns are not. So I would probably bring those down this way because otherwise it's a little bit weird that that force doesn't affect the sideburn and I would simplify this too in a more graphic way without giving too much of a roundness like this sometimes it's not necessary most of the time um, Thor draws the hair as a real one single line Oh, one, one important thing is that this line here of the nose connects to the upper, to, to the eyebrows. It, it literally, we should feel this. The eyebrow goes here, and there is a connection, even if it disappears here, it's still there. And this helps lighting with this volume that should be on the same line don't forget that at some point this will be lit by the lighting artist so um, again here it could be the beak on a shape on the on the brain could be pushed a little bit more maybe uh, something I understood better on this movie was that lip sync doesn't just happen here it's not just something that involves the face from under the nose to the chin. It involves the whole face. For example, when a character opens the mouth to say a big A, also the the eyebrows goes up, go up to con contrast this movement. It's like this sort of thing. So it, what, something goes down very uh, quick, like the chin goes down while the, the eyebrows go up to balance that. I don't know, but uh, it really involves the whole face, the whole face squashes and stretch. Of course, depends on the character, but I, I am lead on Jasper and he's very squashy, squashy and stretchy. And so that's where I take the, uh, it's on the mirror that I study myself and see um, how I squash and stretch myself. I know I don't do it much, but then I make a caricature of that. And also uh, the, the mirror is to understand Apart from the up and down of the chin, also the how the, the mouth goes back and forth. Like, for example, if the character says ooh, the mouth goes ahead and then it goes back and rotates. There are, it's quite a complex movement that the mouth, mouth does when, when uh, there is a lip sync. So that's the purpose of the mirror. <laughs>